Namhlanje ku making moves sobe sibhekene nomkhakha wokudla. Sivaka shela uHomo Tsombethe eqahliso ese West Rand one business elibizwa imuthewa wahlulu trading. Elidayisela umphakathi wakhe izingwa. We big plus minus 700 looks. Yeah. And then we pay plus minus 600 hamburger rolls. Yes. Sipinde siya e dolo beni la sekoli. Ogyo kritis kashani e daki kefe. La abati nisa kona ugula. Ezi zwe nisi kumbili. I mean, you look at the guys that are here. It's, you know, the mature crowd. It's, it's you know, the, your corporate. Bobabi ili labo so ma business. E bazo farashele studio. Ogzo kulu manga matabo. Okuli sa ma business sabo. And even with the one location, she can really, like I said, go become efficient. <laughs> Nancy Puzo, Pagan and Amalunga on Pagazi, Ganya, no one has said, Beku figure at Lung selling go good and Nancy Puzo's Alice Soscati. I think the South African restaurant business is really good. I think that it's uh, got it's very diverse and we've got foods from all over the world and people have like made them their own and we've also got our own South African food which is also I think we have the best meat in the world personally. Lomkaka ganye no wakwai wa ubiza ma billion au 265 wa marandi wenyaga ga 2014. Um I think women are really un underrepresented in all businesses. To be honest, I think there's more women in terms of operations, but there is more men running the businesses. Lona umkaka obanzi futi upinde udalele ama SME ama tuba maningi kuto upinde ube no shincho luningi beko fika kuzinga la batengi. Like I think there's more like women in the business of maybe restaurants or food. I think the the food uh, and bakery business are mostly run by men due to the fact that in, in, in the past it has been perceived by many people that uh, men are, are the ones who run businesses actually. Loku kuhambisana ni simo som noto. Ngogusho kwe zibali ezi sando kishwa besi kata ni sano nyaga ga 2014. Imali alo mkaka isinyure nga pezu wama percent ayishumi kusure la kukala kuga 2015. Independent food retailers are businesses that are privately owned. These include bakeries, restaurants, fresh and non-fresh groceries. Yabwana gelama business lawa, asungu ule ugutiga awazu kututukisa impilu, salo mkandu ya lanage esebenze lakona. Na mklanja sikile tela oso ma businessi ababili abesi mami. Abasebenza ngo kulu gui misela, ukuza kela ikama uguwa na lumkaka lona wezo ugutu. Nangu, so ma businessi wetu wakale. the owner of Muteo Bakeries in Kahiso, Mukhale City. We bake fresh bread and rolls daily, and we've got three stores in Kahiso Extension 1, Kahiso Central, and Geba Street. Please come and taste the unique taste of freshness. And this is my hometown, Kahiso. I'd like to welcome you guys to come in for a lovely brunch today. Growing up in Kahiso, it was very humbling. When I follow Munati, we eat the pulao mokasi, the salad keto. We, but you know, kafora tlo busunzo bolu mokai and make sure horo apeya. So now, as always, the first one to remember horo to give the people apeya. The fond memories will always. Be spending time with my family, reacting, coming back, and having our lunch together, dancing to music, and just being happy. We must have a lot of fun, but we have to hold the one control. We have to control our tahulail. We have to cast on our tahulail. We must have a lot of fun, and very happy. Kabatu kuat. Oh, milit. Kita coba hai. 
She's a very calm, collective mom. She's, you know, she spells us a lot, gives us what we want, and she's also can be strict, and, but we, we love her very much. She's a great mom. Uh, she's a hard worker. She always motivates us to do well and to have a bright future. She always gives us those encouraging words. I don't want to run out of the way. I don't want to run out of the way. I don't want to run out of from sub A up until standard five. Eh, uh, hono mo nati mo skolongse. That's where my roots are. Mama kana li mistress wa ka untuti loko A sub B. Ya kana ko ila tupane shapiwa. So there was no exception for na li na niki rubala mo di mo kata fully and get the beating. This is the happy home that I grew up in, and that is why Obona Hotel is the hotel in Gateng. When we are here, retweet, Bobo, Sharon, non Sakilerato. That's how we grew up. business <laughs> So she's got to juggle them all. Yeah. But they've got to get them. Mm -hmm. So some of them you do them yourself. Most you supervise, but at the end of the day the customer must be happy. Yeah. If a car, you know what if business and until Bulua Eli Yakulu, what time does your day start? My day starts at four when yeah. I have to prepare my kids. Mm -hmm. And fortunately my husband, who's also my co my husband is the co-owner. Yes. He will be making sure that we open the other branches because they open as early as six. Mm -hmm. and, and then, yeah, he'll come and fetch me and then we'll be doing other things. I sit with other baking because I do most of the confection. Yeah. Yeah. No, now that. we've got one delivery that we need to make. Yeah. And then we deliver it to the other branch, Amaros, Macron. Baking happens, and yes. then we distribute to the other branches that you saw. It's a headquarters, yeah, like that. Yes. Yeah, and yes, we see me actually move and we should look at headquarters. Can I get in? I mean, even in seven. With pleasure.
no, 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 hot dog rolls yeah uh, but then also it depends on order and need because amalanga in the month are not the same sis what made you decide to go to fununga and agule business especially go to so fully bakery and auction as a young girl i in tandeng jeng kulang se kitchen yeah uko oko manye nyom vagashela she's a person as a kitchen so i've always been keen yeah and now recently when i think back it's very interesting to remember with you. In fact, this came a while back. It started a while back, but I didn't pay attention to it then. Yeah. Uh, but over and above, it's the passion that I have yeah. for what I do, mm -hmm. and that's why I've lasted to this day. Well, as you can see, yeah. this is the other part that I told you about, yeah, the franchise, yeah. The takeaways. Yeah. So, bom me bare kile di kota. Me iba gamu chalo se zahuru kite di kuku kasi kore variety of them. Yeah. Nika bos. Okay. Eh, thanks. Sorry, we disturb. I said we're ready to start alone. Eh, kupa bota hanyani. Eh, di kota zamu hai wale rata hudi na eka. Karika wana rahali di kwa eti se di wili nka tinga zon. Eh, di mo na di tata ke kwa di ti. Yes. I hope you the next time when I come to visit you. And like you said, everywhere. We'll do. Yeah. All the best. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you, Dad. 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 Tsobeka tsebenza nje ngoma bhalani kwelinye la mabhangi ala e South Africa. Godwa uthi imali bebe mkhokhela yone ibe nganele ukuthi angakwazi ukondla umndeni wakhe. Kwase kwathi ke ngo 2011 wasungulela elakheke ibusiness ele bakery lapha e Brits. However, the choice of location did not work for the business as she had to relocate to her home township in Kagiso. Jenga manje use studio seat ukusitshela ukuthi lakho na ibusiness lakhe lisebenzela khona lihamba kanjani. Let him that should help me um, not manage my time because I, I manage it nicely just to to learn how to take a break I don't know how to take a break and maybe when I do take a break other things will just flow Nice of you to join me. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Mm -hmm. Likewise. So welcome to Making Moves. Thank you. Uh, I'm starting with two questions. The first one is, we were supposed to shoot this a month ago. Yeah. What happened? Oh, a month ago. Mm. I got in an accident. I fell the night before. So my leg was very swollen. I wouldn't have made it. Yeah, so that's, that's why I couldn't make it a month ago, and... And the second question is, today, eh. you've kept me waiting for about three hours. Um, uh, Jesus, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, is this how seriously you take your business? Yes, that's how serious I take my business, because it had to come first. Explain. I had to make sure that my customers are served on time. The only glitch that happened is that I mix the dates up. Uh, I didn't actually get to accept the invitation, and out of my head, I said the sixth. So now, you're here, uh, Motel Bakeries. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about this very problem that you say you're having. Mm -hmm. You're the driver, you're the accountant, the business owner, the marketing person. How's it going? Are you managing with the load? And um, how are we going to grow the business if you are stretched so tight? I am managing because things get done. And like I was saying to somebody else before I got here, I think I'm too much of a perfectionist that if something is not done by me or is not supervised by me, 
um, I've, I have a problem, especially when you're dealing with client queries and customer satisfaction in general, because I've promised my customers the best. And when the best is not delivered and I'm not around, everything comes back to me. So everything that leaves the shop, every delivery up to the production, I've got to supervise and monitor that things happen right. But uh, before I'm a businesswoman, I'm a mom, I'm a sister, and yeah, so, but so far, I hope that with what I will get from here, it will help me going forward in terms of my growth and managing my things right and making sure that things get done right. And the most difficult um, part of your business right now? The most difficult part of the business not right now, it's actually keeping the doors open and making sure that I supply what is demanded and what I promised. And cash flow is an issue because when I started this business, it was mainly from my own contribution. And as you get to approach other things, you realize that they need money. It's, it's not the same calculations that you had. And other things, are unexpe I, I, and you don't expect them to happen, but they do happen. Uh, you work, you, you're working like last night, a mission broke, I've got to wake up in the middle of the night, phone somebody and make sure they get there, because if they don't get there, then I don't have, I won't be able to deliver in the morning. Um, yeah. Are, are all three shops profitable? Yes, they are profitable because I can pay my rent, I can pay my staff, I can buy stock. So yes, and I can still save because my kids rely on this business. So yes, they are profitable to a certain extent, not to an extent that I would love uh, because I don't drive my the favorite car yet because the, the reality is that I can't afford it now, but I know I will. I must just push a little bit more. And it would have been a fast car and it would have gotten you here on time. No, no, I've got four kids, so I want car. to be big. Oh, it would have been a big, fast car. Yeah, Okay. and comfortable. So, so, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, Okay, so the business is helping you look after your family. Yes. It's growing. Yes. Um, your biggest challenge you're seeing right now is cash flow, is that yes. correct? Yes. Um, how are you addressing that as, as, as an issue? What are you doing? Are you applying for funding? What's going on? Yes, I have applied for funding. In fact, now I'm in the process of asking for a grant from NYDA before my 35 year lapses by the end <laughs> of this year. So, yeah, I'm in the process of doing yeah. that. And in, 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 in the previous years, I asked for funding from uh, GEP, and they helped me with a cooler, um, a molder, because I didn't have one in the expensive. Uh, and I, want, I wanted them firsthand, because you see, when you're working with staff that work 24 hours, you, you've got to have them new or rather maintained. So with the lack of cash flow that I have, I would prefer to have them working nicely and being looked after nicely and maintained. So other than the fact that you're a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. and you are local, mm -hmm. what else makes you? Because what's the benefit of you being local? To mm -hmm. If I'm a few streets away from your bakery, mm -hmm. well, what's the benefit of you being local? Because I can go to the shop and get a loaf of bread. The so you're, you're no closer than the spaza shop, really. The unique taste of my freshness in every product that I make is it's what keeps me fresh and alive and unique. Because, uh, and I always say to my staff, whenever you sell, and it doesn't matter to who, of what age, you ask yourself first, would that be acceptable to me? And if you're not sure, find out if I would be happy. So, so what makes you unique is the fact that your product is more fresh, fresh. or fresher. It's than fresh, the, yes. other, the other products yes. that are available. I keep it fresh and I keep it very tasteful. Okay. So, Humuto, those are some of the challenges that you've got going on in your business right now. What's the growth plan? What's the vision? Where do you want to see Muteo Bakeries? I want to see Muteo dominating the West End. The West End is huge. And when I speak West End, I'm currently in Kahiso, which is part of Mkhale City. I want to see myself branching out to Nera um, sections, or what do I call them? Yeah, townships. The townships that yes. around, around. Like yeah. Go, Tepisong, Manziville, and so forth. Yeah, that's where I want to be. Fantastic. You're a feisty lady, fiery, <laughs> and I am absolutely in love with you. And I think you've got a very good sense of where your business is going. Okay. I'm going to hand you over to someone who is going to chat to you, uh, a coach, who's going to talk to you a little bit about your business. And then I'll chat to you after it's good. We're now, now, you know, has anything come to you? Have you learned anything? Has she given you any information or advice that you feel you can use moving forward? Thank you. Okay. Yeah.
I shall not die. I I I I I I I I I Yabano uba umpati we business lele le student. Omu nyumu ntanga ibuka gui intelu laga kulu umangabe umenga pandi. Kotoa gi yabana bandaba ni mbaibe kabange ugutike. Izisu lezi ziaktinga ugula. Loko kutkaza ugutike. Imali uzoyenzi be ningi. Kabo bongkabi. Aghambi ganjalo. Pinda utabange futkuti mi ningi mkomo egmele wilandeli. Ugula. Gionagala. Loko kebe sektala ke inkinga umaguza kweze imali. Agesibo ne ugutu shaloti. Zonke lezi inkinga leze ngate zitalo i business laki. Uzbamba ganjalo. I'm Charlotte Monakisi, the owner of Darkie Cafe. So if you're looking for brilliant dishes in a cosmopolitan setting, then Darkie Cafe is the place to be. We've been running for five years now and still going strong. We have uh, live bands every Thursday and a resident DJ every, uh, every Friday. And uh, we also host different events on, on, on Saturdays and any other day of the week. even start I have lots of memories about this place uh, we used to play party right here skipping uh, topo scotch you know all of that stuff so uh, yeah so I was born here grew up here went to primary school in this area until uh, up to the age of what 11 12 and then we moved to the south in Chester Hills uh, when my parents separated. But uh, yeah, all the fun memories are here. All my childhood memories are here. I shall My little sister is eight years behind me. She's the baby. And uh, there's a five year gap between me and my brother. Uh, yeah, man, if we grew up on oh, the start. I mean, so he was never really with us. <laughs> and like most of the time, we grew up go boarding school. And go boarding school as well. So my dad is uh, my anchor. My dad is, uh, he's my business mentor. My dad is my role model. Uh, you know? Uh, go businessing and stuff like that. So to tell you guys a very quick story, uh, Papa has minimal education, ne? and uh, mm -hmm. with uh, with very little education. You know, from nothing. This is a man that kind of built a mini empire from nothing with no level of education. I don't know how he did it. Her strongest quality, I would say her independence. She's a very strong, opinionated person. So, you know, I can definitely go to her and ask for advice, and I know she'll be, she can be a bit cutthroat sometimes, but it's fine. I think in a friend, that's what you need. Let's find out what's on the menu. Ninjani. Yeah, so we'll 
Good morning, Sia. Good morning, Lega. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? I'm super, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Gary. 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 Good morning, you no great stuff. Way? I'll leave you in uh, Ma Rose's capable hands. She'll take care of you. She'll take you through to the kitchen yes. and all of that stuff. And when I come back, then we'll continue with, you know, other okay. formalities. No problem, sis. Ma Rose. I'm back. That was a quick meeting, was it not? I no no no. She she this is part ngale ziaboy. Ziaboy. Ah, that's good. That's good. Who is zingara? Bangje rutinga puli ini ngenze lingsule ini. And how your clients are so you know meticulous. Now finga prince ma classy na. Is it? Ah, that's good. Yeah, I hope they were grilling you. Yeah. Hey, mele bafu ni sum seven. Bangu ni si. Ah, that's good. Yeah. Asi straight end amin. Yeah. This one. Any business lately? What was the concept behind Guti Uvule in the whole engine? Yeah, uh, two things really. Uh, for starters, six years ago there was not much happening in the inner city, right? Mm -hmm. So we saw a gap, and uh, and then uh, at that stage I was applying for Nino's mm -hmm. at Carlton Centre, yes. and uh, Nick, uh, the CEO of, of, of Nino's, was like, "Hey, there's this dynamic young woman called Putlako." Mm -hmm. Uh, she's an interior designer. You know, you two meet together and let's see what you can come up with. Yes. And that's how Dark He was created. So when are your peak times in Nuguti? I want to go to the market and get the food. Yeah. So we're in a corporate space. Yeah. So we, in a, in a nutshell, we in a in a in a uh, corporate precinct mm -hmm. uh, type of thing. So that's, it's our target market. I mean, you look at the guys that are here. It's you know the mature crowd. Mm -hmm. It's it's you know the, your corporate. Yeah. You know, it's good to be unique, man. Yeah. A couple of factors, really. The mm -hmm. first being South African dishes. So I wouldn't say traditional dishes, yes. as you know, because South African is broader, right? Yes. So we've got from the curries to your fish and chips, mm -hmm. which is fifteen tips in, yeah. the, in the menu. Yes. Uh, you know, but we also have your mochodus, your oxtails, your uh, uh, gizzards, and mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, when I work on any business, if I like, you want to the thing is man. Now let's talk about the establishment, like I. Yeah. Uh, to set up was around three million rand set up costs, so it did not come. I mean, look at the finishing touches, right? So it did not come in easy at all, mm. to be honest. So uh, we got a loan structure. We are funded funded by Holland. Mm. Um, they don't usually do these type of funding structures, but. Uh, you know, they're very flexible in terms of their approach to business. If it makes sense, if it's lucrative, you know, they, they, they can look into it. Mm -hmm. I know. I've enjoyed Uguba yeah. like higher and then Gabona and Gutia. Gutia. Yeah. 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 Hmm? No, they do, uh, but it's more month end. Uh, once you've been paid, uh, when you've got disposable so income, it's uh, out. No, is that no, what you're saying? No, about no, 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 no. I'm hoping to basically. Look, uh, a part of this is mentorship, obviously. So I can't wait to spend a bit of time with my mentor, and I just get to the crux of, uh, you know, the problem solving. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that. Okay,
elvulile. Kwa tuwage loko wa kisange kupule ama pupo waki. Woguba uso ma business. She pulled us off together. Applied for funding. And now Taki Cafe is a cosmopolitan hangout spot in the heart of Johannesburg CBD. Jenga manjo sa studio se tu kwa kusana natu. Ugu sichela ugutike. Umupu metlugo part of business like elo kala. Na lila manje. Sia nyabonga mfanagiti. I'm sitting here with Charlotte Munakisi. Charlotte, tell me about Daki Cafe. Yo, where do I even start? There's so much to tell. Well, um, let's start with, is it working for you? It's working for me. Uh, it's been uh, a good seven years. I have uh, gray hairs, I dyed black, but I'm loving the industry. Why did you start it? Why did I start it? Uh, look, uh, by default, to be honest, uh, in terms of the restaurant industry. So Darky was my second restaurant. Um, I had the first one. Got my fingers burned, took the lessons with me, and moved on. Um, so after the first one, I still had the passion. You know, I had a, I had a bit of a taste of engaging with people, the food experience, the ambience, you know, all of that. So I decided to to give it another shot, and that's how Darky came about. So as an individual, yeah, as an entrepreneur, you got into business to achieve certain things. Mm, mm. What were your objectives? What did you want to do for yourself? Yeah. Look, my passion is Africa. My passion is the continent. Uh, I actually founded uh, another company called Network Africa. But in getting, you know, I, you know, I had the goals and the dreams and so on. And uh, when I say by default, it's because I needed something to sustain me in the interim. And I thought the restaurant industry would be the easiest way. You know, get there 10, leave it 2. Little did I know. It doesn't quite work like that, yeah? No, no, not at all. Okay, so Got now sucked in. the first two didn't work so well. What happened? What did, mistakes did you make with the first franchise restaurant yeah. and the second one? Yeah. So uh, the first one uh, is the one that didn't work so well, which is Mimo's. Uh, my first business venture, terrible partnership. Uh, and uh, also, I mean, we're in a mall setting, paying a rental of 48,000 rands a month in the heart of Soweto. So it teaches you, you know, uh, number one, the different aspects as well, because Soweto is a different ball game altogether, different perceptions. You have to, you know, look at the cultural elements and all of that stuff. Uh, and what we did there is that we looked at, obviously, the brand, we looked at the setting, we looked at the numbers, but we did not look at, uh, you know, uh, perceptions and the cultural elements. And like I said, Soweto, you know, the span, the, the, the Spend the, the expenditure rather, or the the eating out experience is completely different. You, you've started three businesses. Yes, so yes. The, guy or not, the, the franchise yeah. early pizza. You went into a more kind of upmarket um, restaurant uh, uh, lounge type mm. business. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. didn't work. Why that? Why didn't that work? You referring to to Darkie or to uh, uh, the one before? To 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 the Mimos, yeah. to the FTV. Uh, yes. Okay. FTV I get, actually. I get to do a brand, I yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the brand actually worked. Yeah. Uh, it's more that whole building uh, had to go down, and uh, obviously the tenants we had to, uh, you know, look into cutting our leases with the option of actually continuing with new owners uh, after that. Uh, yes, it was not, um, you know, as lucrative as we thought it would be, but it was sustainable, and uh, it was it was making money. But you know, obviously not on the level that we thought it would it would have been. So it was not a failure, it was actually quite a successful brand. So, so what kind of support do you think you need in this business? What will take it to the next level? Yeah. Um, primarily, I'd say support in terms of uh, being able to step back. I think that's my biggest uh, uh, challenge at the moment. Just being able to step back and, and I guess it means empowering the, the management structures enough and also being able to, to, to let go myself because I, I can be very, you know, mm. uh, uh, finicky. But I think it's, I need to stop micromanaging and move into an element of macromanaging. So um, that's the first one. That's the, so the big, letting, big, big Letting people challenge. do their jobs. Uh, yeah, and trusting that what, they... What, what about the challenge of, you know, QD, you're a black woman, you're young, mm. you're not very big, mm. you know, Makortani. So <laughs> Makortani. how do yeah. you deal with older staff, particularly older black staff? How do, do people yeah, listen to you? How do you deal with discipline issues? Yeah, yeah. That's a good one, Pepsi. And uh, because uh, it is an issue, 
Uh, not currently, because obviously you, you learn as, as, as you go. Uh, but being young, being female, you know, I deal with, uh, like you said, older males. And there's that element of, uh, you know what, you know, and you know, you, 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 know, you listen to me type of thing. Uh, but what I've learned is structures and systems. You know, you need to have structures, you need to have systems, you need to have reporting structures. And not just with myself, with my other managers as well. I make sure that the guys know uh, that this is how you report to a manager and they don't overstep. If someone oversteps, actually I discipline, like, I, that's a thorough discipline. Um, so yeah, so because of systems, I don't have those, those issues anymore. I think I, when I put my foot down, my staff knows that I put my foot down. And uh, when I've got my smile on, they know, okay, I've got my smile on. It's not easy being an entrepreneur. Not and at all. you're saying that you need more support so that you can take a step back and allow the Ducky brand to grow mm -hmm. um, so that it is not just restricted to one restaurant. Definitely. That's, that's a summary of where yeah. we're at. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna hand you over to someone. Um, I think coaching is very important as entrepreneurs. I think it's nice to speak to someone who doesn't have their head stuck in the business Absolutely. to give you a different perspective. Absolutely. Okay. Who's the CEO of NZ Africa, and they're going to talk about the challenges that she's facing in her business, particularly how to deal with problematic staff. We'll catch up with them later to hear how their coaching session went. Um, so from a branding and a marketing perspective, she needs to start thinking about marketing to the B&Bs in Mulder's Drift. Um, that's the easiest thing um, from my perspective. Umkakanishi wa soma business, ubalege kakulu kwa soma business, abasafufus. Uyabona age, baya kwa azuku kisiza kutipa kufuse makandeni, wena soma business wa safufus. Bakichele uguti, ugupo kwenza kase, igupi, onga kwenzi kase. Njenga manji, agesipo ono uguti, kama coaching sessions wetu, ahambe ganja ni no soma business. So Komoto, I'd really love for you to consider scaling your business down to one location mm -hmm. so that you can get your systems and your procedures in place mm -hmm. that you can actually then have one hub that you're focusing on and your marketing and your branding would then become easier. You know, like I said, growing up, we had this one lady in the community, Best Cook Sisters. She didn't have, it wasn't even named, it wasn't branded, but everybody knew it was the best. Mm -hmm. That's branding. So your branding is not just having a name on a, pl a piece of plastic um, and it, it's easily identifiable. It's your taste. It's the experience that people have when they walk into the bakery. Mm -hmm. It's not just about um, the packaging. Mm -hmm. So it's your entire experience. So you need to start focusing on that. And I really think just scaling it all the way down to one location would help you focus on that more. Um, and think about it, mm -hmm. your branding is not just your product mm -hmm. or your, your packaging. Mm -hmm. It's the entire experience. It's your product. It's the taste. It's the experience with what, that people have when they walk into your store. So did Antoinette help Homoto bake a better business? Did you help her bake a better business? I hope so. Yeah? Yeah. 100% you did, eh? Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking you're prophetic. Because most of the things you said, uh -huh. that's what's been running in my mind. <laughs> Antoinette, uh, what, what, what came out for you in, in terms of uh, when you assessed Komoto's business? I think she's doing too much too soon. Yeah, she's been running her business for five years. Um, but having three locations in one area is just far too much. So I've advised her to think about scaling back to one location. And in that one location, just make sure that it's run effectively, efficiently. There's a user manual. There's employee manuals, there's it just, it runs efficiently. Um, so from a branding and a marketing perspective, she needs to start thinking about marketing to the B&Bs in Mulder's Drift. Um, that's the easiest thing um, from my perspective. She has tons of them out there. She can have high tea at one of those locations on a Sunday or Saturday afternoon invite the owners of the different B&Bs to come and taste her goodies. She can also now think about scaling up and move from just bread and scones to red velvet cakes to even housing a small um, tea room as part of her one location where people can come in and have tea. Um, and even with the one location, she can now, um, if she's going to do it, um, she can really, like I said, go 
become efficient and where people will flock to her store. Um, Komuzo, what, what do you think? I, I think Antoinette, for me, hit the nail on the head. Yeah. What's, what's your impression? Yeah, th that's what I said to her uh, back in our discussion, that uh, she came to me as more prophetic than anything because she was just put on for me. Um, that I will do best what I'm doing if I'm focused and all my energies are directed at one thing, because right now, I think it was too soon for me to branch it all out and without, like she said, having a proper growth plan in place, that would mean, that would uh, answer the questions of uh, who will mend this when you're not there? Because that is what I've never addressed when I opened the other stores. And also going back to the bigger expansion that we spoke about earlier, is that if I could get this one right, they don't have to be three. I'm happy to have you in my life now, mm -hmm. and I think our journey will be more fruitful. Yes. And she'll pay you in bread. <laughs> and pastries. <laughs> and pastries. <laughs> red velvet. So, so, and red velvet cake. So you'll be slightly wider next time we see you. Um, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Yes. I'm glad that there was a connection made. Uh, okay. And I'm glad that you were able to assess Komoto's business so quickly and make an immediate impact. Yes. And congratulations on your journey so far. Thank you very much, Pepsi. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Komoto's just outlined the importance of mentorship. Let's catch up with Charlotte and find out how her coaching session went. So Charlotte, um, based on the brief that I've been given, I understand that your major challenges has been around being able to let go of being so hands-on in your business and enabling your staff to manage your business um, so that you can also you know, step out. And then potentially looking at how you could expand your business. It's a very so complex true. thing to let go. It's not a, you know, it's, people throw it flippantly at mm -hmm. someone and it's not a it's, it's a, it's almost an unfair to expect, I'm gonna let go, Yeah. you know? So it takes time. It's not that easy. Exactly, it's not a, that easy. So letting go is actually, a, there's a strategy of letting go. Mm. I've worked with entrepreneurs where we spent an entire year on just their ability to want to let go sure. before we even started getting into anything else. Yeah. So letting go is a big thing and you need, to, um, you need to be patient and kind with yourself to let go. Now letting go, you need to understand why you want to let go and what it is that you are expecting to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So for your business to operate on its own, fantastic. You know, um, that is the, 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 the ideal win, is when your business operates on its own. And you can choose to be there. Absolutely. You have the choice. Yeah. So whether you are dabbling with, am I ready to or not? Mm. Do I want to? Or is it a matter of, I just don't want to do certain things. I wish the team were able to do certain things so I could spend more time with my customers. So you kind of need to understand what mm. it is that you want. What, when you say you're letting go, what would you like to do more of? What would you enjoy doing? Okay, so, Palisa, you had an opportunity to sit and review Charlotte's business or at least have a conversation and try and glean some insights. Mm. What do you think needs to be improved in the business? So, Charlotte is, um, she's fortunate in the sense that she has a business with a great brand. Um, she, as the business operator, has had a lot of experience and she enjoys what she does. So it's really good to work from that base. Looking at her biggest challenges, it's her ability to let go of the business. The other thing that we wanted to discuss was the staffing issues, and then lastly it was expanding. And so we sort of looked at them in all three areas. The first part about upper, um, letting go of the business. See, entrepreneurs tend to say that I am aware I need to step out of my business. And it's almost a, it's a logical point that I need to step out of my business. But very few have understood what that would mean for them. They're either really ready to let go of their business and they say to you, you know, I would let go of my business if it ran a certain way. I would let go of my business if my team were able to run it without me being there. Um, and then others will say to you, um, I'm not sure um, what that would mean for me. What, won't they need me anymore? 
Do I not get to come into the business anymore? What does that actually mean for me? So we spoke a little bit around what letting go of the business actually means and having a real strategy for letting go. Understanding what it is that you want. Do you want more time? What do you really want? What do you enjoy doing in your business? And how much time do you want to spend doing those things? So you first have to understand if you really want to let go and for what reasons, so that we can address those. So, and then just finally, you, 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 your growth, because we have, we have to wrap it up. Where is Daki Cafe going? What can we expect from you going into the future? Yeah. So uh, Pepsi, we're currently looking at three additional sites, uh, Bramfontein, Soweto, and the airport. Uh, and uh, <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> this time, Soweto, <laughs> not in a mall setting. You get you buy two corner houses and you convert into a restaurant. It's 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 an easier, you know, and cheaper structure. And uh, so obviously it's getting the the structures in place. And I'm glad that you know um, I met Auspalisa today and uh, we got to you know go through it in, in a lot of detail. And we'd actually we're going to engage further beyond yes. uh, beyond this as well to make sure that we get the structures correct before the uh, the, the expansion. So uh, it's, it's very, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting, but we have to do it correctly. Fantastic. Keep her close to you. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much for being on the show. Great. Thank you for, for, for just kind of joining us, sharing your story. And I'm so glad that we've had a role to play in making a connection yeah. Yeah. that yeah. I hope sticks. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm gonna, making moves, we only deal with the top OCs. And uh, so if you're female below the age of 35, business opportunities are plenty. There's an abundance of opportunities available to you in the country at the moment. Just find something that you're really passionate about and get started and help will find you along the way. And who knows, next time, we could be telling your story right here on Making Moves. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Making Moves. My overall experience of Making Moves was uh, phenomenal. My overall experience was wow. Mind-blowing stuff. I, I think I learned so much. That's all I can say about it. Um, especially the last part where I was with my mentor. She was everything I expected and more. Mm, she was God sent, I must say. Uh, it's very uh, easy to get swallowed up in a business, uh, but this taught me now, you know, I was able to take a step back and see everything from a different angle. So it was really, really inspiring. And the one thing I took from that whole experience, and then I recoup, and then I gather all the strength, and I refocus, and I succeed.